it's been a long time coming, but is this new Nissan X-Trail the right car for you? You're gonna find out. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing so far. Please do share the word, join the right car community, hit subscribe, and we'll have a bit of fun together. Pricing for this new generation X-Trail range has gone up between $4,000 and $5,500 for the established grades and nameplates. And that means that it is less competitive than it used to be, but the whole market has shifted up a little bit. So don't read too much into that. When it comes to the model grades, there's the ST and it's available in front wheel drive with five seats or all wheel drive with seven seats. And you get LED lighting, 17 inch wheels, an eight inch touchscreen media system and four USB points inside as well as cloth seat trim. Then there's the STL, which is this one right here. It gets slightly bigger wheels, 18s, also LED lighting. Inside, the STL gets a few nice extras, including a different material on the seats, which is supposed to look or feel like leather, but isn't. There's heated front seats. The second row slides as well, which is very handy and very practical. The step above the STL is the TI grade, which does step up in price a bit, but it adds the option of Nissan's e-power hybrid system. More on that soon. And it's five seat all wheel drive only. So if you need a seven seater with the luxury items that I'm about to tell you about, you might be disappointed. It gets 19 inch alloy wheels, a panoramic sunroof, a bigger touchscreen media system, a digital instrument cluster, sat nav, and an electric boot. All of those things come standard on the TI, but you can't get the TI with seven seats. At the top of the tree is the TIL, which still is a five seater with all wheel drive, either the petrol version or the e-power and it comes with things that you will like, like a 10 speaker Bose stereo system, heated steering wheel and heated rear seats. There are probably some big name options on your alternatives list, but my pick in the midsize SUV range is still the Toyota RAV4. It is a fantastic option. It has hybrid available with front wheel drive or all wheel drive and hybrid if you need it. And it is a very compelling alternative to this. Uh, and to every other mid-size SUV for that matter. Doesn't have seven seats, that's about its only shortcoming. The Nissan X-Trail is all about practicality, it always has been, but there's a model that I think might even be a little bit more practical than this. It's the Subaru Forester. It's a bit more affordable. There's all-wheel drive across the entire range and the option of hybrid, but I wouldn't bother with the hybrid in the Subaru. It's not that good, but it does offer really big practicality on the inside and is a very family-friendly SUV. Finally, you might also want to check out a very closely related model to this, the Mitsubishi Outlander. If you're not aware, the Outlander and X-Trail in this generation basically share a whole lot under the surface. So, they are more closely related than ever before. Yeah, both of them come with petrol options with seven seats or five, depending on what you need, all wheel drive or front wheel drive. But then Mitsubishi has a plug-in hybrid model, which is even more eco-focused than the e-power version of this. Now, the plug-in hybrid offers up to 80 Ks of EV driving range. So if you're not sure if an EV is right for you and you wanna have your cake and eat it too, then maybe the plug-in hybrid version of the Outlander could be the perfect car for you. The Nissan X-Trail is just a little bit bigger than some of its rivals. It's 4.7 meters or thereabouts, but I guess you need that extra space if you're trying to fit three rows in, even if the third row isn't huge. What is huge are these door openings. Let me show you. That opens 90 degrees, people, and that means that you can easily get yourself in without having to bend over too much. If you've got a child seat, like I've fitted here, and you are getting a child in and out of there all the time, that makes a massive difference because it doesn't mean you're gonna end up with a sore back because you're not angling yourself in awkwardly. All right, check out the boot, shall we? Nissan states that the boot capacity for the five-seat versions of the X-Trail is 585 litres, but that's only if you remove these divide and hide things. So they're supposed to basically divide the boot. It does work, but they can also be annoying and just get in the way. You'll notice that I said that that was the boot capacity for the five seat versions of the X-Trail. If you choose a seven seater, you get a smaller boot because those third row seats do take up that hidden space that was not hidden anymore if you buy the three row version. There's also a space saver spare wheel under this boot floor, which is always good to have, much better than having no spare at all. 
The Nest and X-Trail has always been one of those practical SUVs that puts storage and thoughtfulness ahead of styling and, I guess, wow factor. And that continues with this new generation model to a degree, especially in the lower grade versions, which don't feel as special as the higher up models. Um, a lot of that comes down to this small looking screen on the dashboard here. It isn't very big and it isn't very amazing, but it does have buttons and dials and it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you can't really have much worse, but it isn't necessarily changing the game. Like I said, the higher spec models get a bigger screen, which does up the ambience in here quite a bit. Another thing I'm not so sure about is the selection of materials throughout the cabin. There's a brown plastic around the top of the dash and the top of the doors, which just looks a bit weird to me. Um, there's also mismatches between this material here and this material on the dashboard. It's supposed to look like a wood grain finish, but it doesn't have that wood grain finish anywhere else in the cabin. So it's really quite odd. Practicality wise though, it's got a lot of things going for it. A couple of big cup holders here, another storage nook here, another big storage section underneath here. And then you've got a covered center console bin, which has some loose item storage in there as well. There's big door pockets with bottle holders too, and a little sunglass holder. So storage wise, it is very well thought out, but the wow factor, mm, a little bit lacking in this grade at least. Like I said, the X-Trail is about practicality and the back seat is a really good example of that. It has like a stadium seating position because you do feel like you're sitting up a bit higher looking down over the front. If you've got small kids in a baby seat, it does work well for them. They can see a little bit more than they would in something that sat lower. So that could be a good thing if your child suffers from car sickness, for example. Also really good to see for all versions of the X-Trail. There are air vents, directional air vents, so you can make it cool in the back seat or hot if you need to as well. Now, this seat is set for me at 182 centimeters or six foot tall, and I've got heaps of room in this position, but if I needed more boot space, I could do that and still have, well, not too much room, but you can slide these second row seats in the STL grade, and that is a pretty good thing. Just be aware that if you are sliding this one, it's quite heavy to do it. So yeah. You might need to think about where you want this to be more of the time. It's easy to slide back though. Now, these seats, as I said, kid friendly, ISOFIX in the outboard seats, three top tether points. And an interesting thing, um, it's got a armrest that is a seat. There are map pockets on the backs of the seats. There's bottle holders in the doors for your drinks if you need them. Two USB ports back here too, and a nice flat floor. So you could theoretically fit three adults across the back in here. Yeah, practicality. X-Trail nails it. The mainstay of the Nissan X-Trail engine range is this, the 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine. And it's not really revolutionizing the game when it comes to midsize SUVs and engines. It's okay in terms of power and torque. You see the figures on your screen. It comes with a CVT automatic transmission and the choice of front wheel or all wheel drive, as I mentioned. If you're after something maybe a bit more eco-focused, there's the Nissan e-Power option, which is a three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, but it doesn't act like an engine in the traditional sense. It's more like a generator that works with a battery pack and two electric motors, one at the front, one at the rear. That is a weird setup, if you ask me, but it is also less efficient than, say, a Toyota RAV4 hybrid, which has been on sale for four years. So I'm not sure why you'd choose that. The new generation X-Trail doesn't set any new benchmarks in terms of driver dynamics or enjoyment. In fact, in some ways it almost feels like it's taken a step backwards. The old one was fine to drive, not fun, but fine. This new generation one, it's not terrible to drive, but geez, I was expecting better for a new generation model, especially having come out of the Nissan Qashqai, which kind of blew me away with how good it was. I was expecting the same sort of step change from the last generation X-Trail to this one, but mm, I've been disappointed. That is to say that this one doesn't seem to ride as comfortably as the last one. It feels like it's got a really sharp edge to the ride. And also the steering is a little bit more inconsistent. It's light at times when it shouldn't be. Further to that, there's that 2.5 litre engine, which is fine, but it does have this tendency to really surge from a standstill. So if you're parked and you all of a sudden hit the throttle, 
to get away from a standstill, you might find that it can jump and actually surprise you how quickly it jumps. It's not very refined in that regard. And I guess refinement is probably the right word that needs to be addressed. It isn't unrefined, I wouldn't say that, but it could do with some further enhancements. So what could Nissan do to make it better? Well, they could soften up the ride just a little bit. I mean, this car's on 18 inch wheels. I've driven a few cars recently on 20s that rode much better than this. And also it could just be more involving. It's not very fun to drive. If fun doesn't matter to you, if you're just after a car that'll tick the box, fine, cool, it'll be fine for you. But I like driving and I like cars that make me smile. This car just hasn't really done that. Let's talk efficiency. The official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the front wheel drive versions is 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres, which is okay. Not setting any new standards for this size of car. I've been driving a front wheel drive model for this last week and you'll see on screen what I achieved. So not necessarily fantastic. And then there's the all wheel drive models, which will use 7.8 litres per 100 kilometres. Now that's the petrol 2.5 litre all wheel drive model. The e-power version, which uses that tricky three cylinder engine turbocharged that feeds the batteries and the electric motors, it'll use 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Now I would have thought that the hybrid like model in the range would have used a lot less fuel than that. Considering that a RAV4 uses a lot less than that, it's pretty disappointing. The Nissan X-Trail has a 5-star ANCAP safety rating. It was from 2021, which seems a bit weird considering the car went on sale at the end of 22 or early 23. It also has all the stuff that you would expect to achieve a high score when it comes to safety tech. There's autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian, cyclist and junction detection. There's lane keeping assistance, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and a rear auto braking system as well, which will hopefully stop you from colliding with people or things when you're backing up. There's adaptive cruise control for all models and all of them come with a reversing camera and rear parking sensors. If you choose the STL or above, you get a surround view parking camera and front parking sensors as well, which does make it just a little bit more convenient and a little bit safer as well. Like most other brands on the market, Nissan offers a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is decent. You can get better if you buy a Kia or an MG, but it's not too bad. There's cap price servicing available for the X-Trail range, but the big thing with the X-Trail is that it requires servicing every 12 months or 10,000 kilometers, which is a bit short for people in Australia who typically do more than that on average per year. There's also a prepaid servicing plan available for three, four or five years. There's also the cost of the servicing that you need to consider. It's relatively high. For the front wheel drive models, it's about $500 per year on average over a six year cap price plan period. And it's even more for the all wheel drive models. If you want a family friendly SUV from a reputable brand with a very well known nameplate, the new generation Nissan X-Trail could be just right for you. However, I've been left just a little bit cold by this new generation X-Trail. I don't necessarily like the way it drives. I don't necessarily think it deserves to be the price that it is. And also those service costs are quite high, but I can see the appeal still. Would you choose the X-Trail though? I'd love to know your thoughts. Hit me up in the comments section and join the community. Let's keep the conversation going. The more you share this channel, the more videos I can make. So please do share it around. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.